Hi everybody, this is Andy Burton for Keyboard Magazine. And today we're going to be doing an audio comparison of the new Hammond Suzuki USA XK5 organ with my trusty 1971 vintage Hammond V3. Before we begin, I'm going to explain a few things about how this test is going to work. For this test, the XK5 will be running through the V3 and into the Leslie 122 speaker cabinet, which is in the booth over there. This means going through the B3's AO28 preamp. The AO28 merges the XK5 signal with that of the B3, so that we can play and hear both organs at the same time through the same wonderful old Leslie. This gives us the opportunity to do a true side-by-side -side tone comparison. Another thing I need to point out before we begin, Leslie cabinets, especially great ones like that vintage 122, uh, have been known to forgive a multitude of sins. I remember once hearing an old Yamaha DX7 playing an organ patch through a 122 and thinking, hmm, that doesn't sound too bad. On a related note though, I'm going to go out on a limb and say for the record, I believe no simulator out there sounds as good as this Leslie. But I'm not set up here to test that belief. This video is going to concentrate on evaluating the organ tone of the XK5 and seeing if we can match it to this B3. Lastly, I'll be recording the output of the Leslie through a pair of AKG 414 mics uh, going through a clone of a Neve 1272 preamp in stereo. This is the way I normally record organ in my studio. So, having said all that, let's get started. <coughs> Okay, so let's look at some of the options that the XK5 gives you for shaping the tone. We're gonna start with the source, the tone wheels. So, tone wheel, we've selected and going into it now. See, it says B3. Well, we have a B3 underneath us, but you can also have a C3, mellow, what else, A100. They're, now, I don't really understand the difference between these because they're all supposed to be identical but Hammond has seen fit to give you some options here. So let's see if there's any difference between them. Okay, so first we're gonna start with the actual B3. I'm just gonna play a little for you. on the B3 setting. Okay, now let's hear it with the C3 setting. A100. the mellow setting. All right, I heard some subtle differences there. The B3 one sounded the brightest and perhaps the closest to the actual B3. Let's do a little comparison again. Or, that's more accurate. Okay, now that was the four draw bars out four draw bars out, percussion on third harmonic, soft, uh, fast, and so I have the exact same settings on both the B3 and the XK5, and if you get a good shot of my hands on the draw bars here, uh, we're gonna try out some different ones now. Let's try a different setting. Let's go for, say, the uh, High Records, Al Green, Charles Hodges sound. Something like this, and we can add a little reverb here, and it would sound something like Bass Leslie. Let's hear it. It's, that's a little reverb and Bass Leslie. Same draw bar settings, B3 settings, and here we go.
tell you the truth, I really don't hear a whole lot of difference. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the, um, the preamp settings. There are tubes inside of the XK5. All right, so we're gonna go here to where it says amp slash effect. And now there's, we see tube routing. Right now we're in bypass mode. Now, mind you, we are going through the AO28 on the Vintage B3, so we're hearing the coloration of that preamp already, which I can't help. But this will give you an idea of some of the things that you can do to change the sound and get your own, you know, maybe uh, if you have a B3, you can match the personality of yours or another one that you really like from some records or something. So right now, there are, the two tubes are the bi they're bypassed. Um, but let's switch them to, all right, now this says X7 to X7, so that refers to the 12 AX7 tube. And let's compare that to the bypass. So you see it adds a little dirt. Now we have a drive level that go, it's right now set to 81. We can rise, we can bring that up. Getting gnarly, pretty gnarly. Pretty dark and pretty gnarly. Let's hear what that fully overdriven sound sounds like with the other tube. We have the, the uh, U, U12A U7s. Still nasty. U7, X7. U7, X7. You can also mix the two, X7 to the U7. Or U7 to X7. All right, so that's for you uh, people that like your organ gnarly. And it's pretty good. And they're, they're fairly subtle, the differences, but audible to me. And uh, you can really personalize your organ and make it sound exactly the way you want sound. So that's pretty cool. All right, next we're gonna look at the, vibr the vibrato and percussion. So from here we go here to, oops, sorry, vib and co, vibrato and chorus. And so now again, we have a bunch of different models. This says 1959, 59 plus. We have other options, 55, 57, 59, um, so let's see if we can hear any differences. This is the C3 setting. So we're gonna just listen to this. Here's no vibrato and this is 55, 57. You can change the speed, it's 6.83 hertz. I'm not gonna mess with that right now. Okay, let's hear 59. Well, here's 57. 59. 57 to 59, sorry. 59 plus, go back and forth between them. I'll be darned if I can hear any difference between those. Um, let's compare it to the real deal. This is a 1971 B3, so it's not even on the map. It's not even on the map, it's from 71, so it's, it's, they tended to get deeper as the years went on. Compare it to, well, this is still too distorted. Let's, give me two seconds. I'm going to take some of that, I'm going to dial back some of that overdrive. In fact, let me just bypass the tubes altogether. sound similar. That's, that's the XK5. Yeah, I think they really nailed this vibrato. All right, let's try the percussion now. So I've just, this is the, the standard settings, soft, fast, third harmonic, and we have something like off the vibrato so you can just hear the percussion. And if we just
just listen to the percussion by itself. We have. Okay, let's hit, listen to the same thing on the XK5. Same exact settings. And now let's compare just the percussion tone. B3. XK5. Let's go down low. Oops, sorry. I can't hear a difference. I think I've got the actual duration of the sound. Let's try a louder version. Let's do the, let's, let's go on the slow decay. All right, there's a difference. Oh no, is that right? Yeah. That's significantly, that is significantly different in the bias. The first major difference I've heard. This is quite, uh, quite softer on the real B. And now let's try the second harmonic. Yeah. Well, we can adjust that. If we go back over to the left here. We can adjust that in the percussion settings. So let's go to percussion. Where is percussion? There is percussion. Enter. Now our soft level is at negative 11. And our normal is here. So let's see. Let's make that a lot softer. We'll have to make our softer even soft. So soft even softer. All right, so we can dial it in to the point where it's pretty much identical. And now let's pull our draw bars out and let's hear the results. Let's get this. Oh, this is, there we go. Now we got an apples to apples comparison. So there you have it. We can dial it in to get it exact. All right, next we come to a selling point of this new model, which is the multi-contact key bed. Now, a real B3, uh, there are nine bus bars, which um, basically nine contacts are made every time you hit a key. So basically corresponding to the different draw bars. So let's say I pull all the draw bars out and I'm gonna play a note and play it very softly and slowly. And you're gonna hear stuff coming in one at a time. Different harmonics come in at different times as you make contact with one by one as the key travels down to the bottom of the key bed. So these new multi-contact key beds inside the XK5 have three contacts and they simulate nine. So, oh, I have the percussion on, sorry. I have to pull all the draw bars out now. There are three distinct events when I push it down. Back to the Hammond. So, Basically, none of the other clones out there do anything like this. They simulate it using key velocity in some cases, or they don't do it at all. You can hear it kind of subtly. Again, but all these little subtle things are what adds up to a realistic experience. You can adjust it with incredibly fine detail on this thing. You can do it tone wheel by tone wheel um, if you want to. So. If so all depends on how obsessive you want to get. Um, but I, let me just give you some last, some general impressions. The overall feel, the keys themselves feel really good. They look identical. 
Um, the key travel is pretty much the same. Um, feel wise, there's no way you're gonna get perfect replication of the action because on a B3, these keys go quite long. They're quite uh, deep into the, into the instrument. And um, no one has made keys on a clone that go as deep as that, basically for space consideration reasons. And it's the same thing here. Um, how, having said that, it's very clever how they have arranged the, the way the springs and whatever else they use in the action to make it really feel pretty close. Certainly, certainly as close as any clone I've used. Uh, this is a little bit softer and spongier than the real thing. But so close, I mean, I could try to do. Just as much fun to play. Okay, so I'm just gonna play a little bit and just give you an idea of what it's like to just uh, jam out on this a little bit, so. for watching and listening. Uh, this summer and fall, I'll be out with uh, Stephen Van Zant and Little Stephen and the Disciples of Soul uh, all through uh, Europe this summer and USA in the fall. And um, it's a magnificent 15-piece band. I'll be playing a real B3, and I hope to see you all out there. Thanks a lot. Keep it real.